Hi, I'm Dr. Craig Wright. This presentation reports on some research that was conducted by myself and Michaeli Wright at Understanding Minds and Liz Conlon from the Griffith University Health Institute. We were looking to see whether voice over the internet protocol or video conferencing software could be used to deliver reading intervention at the Understanding Words program to uh, remotely to a student in a rural area. We've subsequently completely finished this study and it's been written up for publication in Sage Open. Um, there's a link for the journal and for the complete paper on the Understanding Words website. The problem we were addressing in this research, perhaps 15 to 30 percent of the population have difficulty with reading. We know how to reduce the incidence of reading disability to about one to two percent of the population, but particularly in rural and remote regions, students have access to fewer services than their urban peers. There's also significant costs in travel and, and in terms of loss of income uh, for these students and their families to access services in, in the city. So what might be the solution? Voice over the internet protocol or video conferencing. People would be familiar with programs like Skype or iChat uh, or Adobe Connect. These programs allow teacher and student to connect remotely over the internet um, to essentially conduct the same sorts of teaching as they would um, be involved in face-to-face. Uh, -face. We definitely know that VoIP can improve access and reduce costs, but we weren't sure whether it, would, whether it would work. So that was the purpose of this particular study. How does it work? The following video will show a very brief example of video conferencing uh, teaching at work. Try those words for me, please, mate. Um, st study, string, 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 part, fiddle, fiddle, good one, ba baby, middle, carpet, Fin finished. Finished. Good one. For ten weeks, so we measured his reading progress across a time when he was receiving no treatment. Then he received the Understanding Words reading treatment um, over the internet for ten weeks, um, approximately four times a week, roughly forty minutes per session for a total of forty-three sessions. We then did a ten-week follow-up where we were again measuring his um, uh, growth in reading ability when he wasn't receiving treatment and that follow-up was 10 weeks as well. So in total 30, a 30 week study. The intervention program was of course understanding words. Anyone wishing to obtain more information about uh, understanding words can visit the understanding words website. Basically at heart it's a synthetic phonics program that very explicitly and sequentially teaches um, letter sound knowledge and teaches kids to uh, link that knowledge to the decoding and spelling of novel words, um, teaches high frequency irregular words when necessary and links them directly to the reading of sentences and uh, stories. The, the name of the game is reading rather than acquisition of reading subskill. It also has oral comprehension strands that uh, allow us to teach vocabulary, sentence comprehension, drawing of inferences and figurative language where necessary. Treatment protocol, we tested word level reading skills at the beginning and end of each stage with the Castles and Coulter word reading lists. We used the Neil analysis to, to measure text reading accuracy and comprehension and we used a curriculum based measure of non-word reading at weekly intervals to, to measure growth um, over time. Okay, so our data. This is the curriculum based measure of non word reading. Um, the vertical axis is the raw score. So we can see here up until um, the end of the initial baseline when BM wasn't receiving any treatment, we've pretty much got a, a, a flat trend. So there's no improvement there. The second period up until week 20, 
was the treatment period. So that's why it was receiving uh, understanding words four times per week over the internet. And you can see there's a trend for rather rapid upwards growth in, in reading ability during that time. Across the um, second 10-week um, baseline or, or follow-up period, if you like, when he wasn't receiving treatment, there is a little bit of a trend for continued upward progress, but the line is fairly flat. So what those data are telling you is that without treatment, there was little improvement in reading ability. The introduction of the um, of the understanding words treatment precipitated sharp upwards growth in reading ability. We saw similar trends with the Castles and Coltart non-word lists. So the only exception there was the uh, the ir irregular words, which is the, the the red one. We didn't see much growth in irregular word reading, but there was quite sharp growth. You can see here from from where treatment began through to the end of treatment in both regular word reading and non-word reading. So what that meant was that BM was much more able to decode unfamiliar words at the end of the study, and he probably had uh, quite a number more um, words in his mental dictionary that he was able to read by sight at the end of the study. The size of the change was rather large, so it was greater than 0.8 of a standard deviation on all measures except that irregular word um, reading task. That's really equivalent to to a, a strong effect size. We we're really very happy with the with the um, outcomes of what was again a fairly um, brief period of intervention. So we're only talking 40 weeks, um, um, less than 40 hours of intervention. We have a look at uh, BM's uh, post treatment status. His score on the Castles and Coltart regular word test was um, 1.32, so it's a Z score. It's in the, the ninth percentile, so better than nine percent of kids his age. The non-word reading score from the Castles and Coltart, Coltart list was in the eighth percentile. Text reading accuracy from the Neil was in the fourth percentile, and reading comprehension in the tenth percentile. So BM remained a poor reader at the end of the study, but we have to remember. First of all, that this was a very period, a very brief period of, of uh, treatment, and the purpose was to see whether the voice over the internet protocol or the video conferencing approach could be successful, rather than to make meaningful change in his in his reading ability. And we were, we believe, successful in doing. So, what conclusions do we draw from the study? First of all, a caution: we can't be certain that the treatment was the cause of the change because it's only a single case design. But there was certainly co-variation between reading growth and the onset and cessation of treatment, which gives us um, hope for the future. Our preliminary conclusion is that VoIP may be an effective and cost-effective method of delivering reading intervention to rural and remote regions. That's a conclusion that needs to be investigated in larger case series designs and hopefully in, in group designs. But it's certainly that this study and the data reported um, certainly suggests that VoIP um, has great potential for delivering services to rural and remote regions. It's also possible that uh, schools will be able to use this um, technology to introduce virtual specialists, so perhaps specialist teachers, um, tutors, speech pathologists, um, even educational psychologists um, to their school environment, to their students via the internet. Um, and these are the types of services that many rural and remote schools would not otherwise have access to. We've also raised the possibility that there may be applications not just for rural students but for urban areas. So within um, cities, it's not uh, unheard of for parents to travel 30 to 40 minutes to attend a tutoring or a specialist session. Um, there seems no reason why uh, video conferencing can't be used to reduce uh, this travel time and the costs associated um, with that travel.